mad at the Murds roads, strode up and down the beach, his cape whirling, Gumball trotting after him, rubbing his black cape, um, gloved hands together. In 15 minutes, the murderous tribe would have the revenge for which they had waited a hundred years. 14 minutes whispered the gut judges together, staring at the sand timers. 13 minutes, a stroke of 13 minutes. Old Wrinkly thought he caught a sound coming from out to sea. He shielded his eyes from it, raised the setting sun with one gnarled and wrinkled hand and cut the other behind his ears. Was it just his imagination playing tricks on him? Was it just the beat of his old heart making the sound that he so longed to hear? For the first time in three months, the old man got to his feet, his ancient legs shaking as he leant heavily on his staff. He stumbled forward in the sand, straining, longing, willing it to be the sound he wanted it to be, and there it was. Coming from out of the sea, soft but getting louder every second. astonishment of the watching crowds, the old man let out a cracked old laugh and began to dance in the sand on his bent old legs, his clothes flapping around him like a scarecrow doing a jig. He's really lost it, they thought, as old Winkley bustled back to the judge's table, his eyes now brimful of merriment and excitement. And then came a shout from the cliff tops. Stoic shouted out something and pointed, and the crowd could not hear what he was saying, but they looked where he was pointing towards the long rolling waves coming in from the west. There was nothing there but the path of the setting sun lighting up the tops of the long waves rolling in from the west. And then there came a cry from no, but no, no, no brains maybe. Look, over there! And there, distinctly far into the bay, were three little heads bobbing in the waves. What is this? snarled Gumball, screwing up his eyes to try and see what they were looking at out there in the water. Those are just seals. Seals with horns? asked Gobble the Belch, with hope rising in his chest. Dear then, argued Gumball, but as the little heads swam nearer and nearer, it became clear that they were not deer. These those were Viking helmets on their heads, and hovering protectively above them were the distinct shapes of two small hunting dragons. And as they came nearer and nearer still, Old Winkley cried out, Remember, they must land here unaided. His warning was unnecessary, but was as if the crowd had been turned to stone, so dumbfounded were they. Three figures swam closer and closer until they got into their depth and then they put their feet down on the sand of the archipelago and they waded waist high through the crashing waves. Hiccup, kamikaze and fish legs staggered out of the water of the great west ocean exactly three months, five days, five hours and 58 minutes after they had entered it. They were totally bewildered to find everybody on the beach, flares in their hands apparently waiting for them and absolutely silent and stunned. They had entered the ocean all that long, long time ago, a laughing stock. The smallest contestants in the race jeered at, pointed at, humiliated and embarrassed. Now the same crowd that had laughed at them, laughing so uproariously into the water, greeted them with awed, wide-eyed wonder and amazement. Slowly the huge adults on the beach removed their helmets as they passed, the ultimate sign of respect. They fell back in wonder at the soft footprints in the sand. They murmured their astonishment as great hairy forearms were raised, firing salute. Oh, I love this picture. It was the proudest moment in Fishlegs' life. He had left this very beach an object of ridicule, unable to swim and wearing those ridiculous armbands. Now all those who had laughed had watched him as he swam, entirely unaided up the whole depth of the bay. Even though he was so tired he could barely put one foot in front of another, his back was straight his head held high, and as he passed he heard one hooligan whisper to a boat murderer, that's fish legs there, the one on the right, in a tone of recognition and admiration. Imagine that for a boy only used to being ignored at or laughed at. Fish legs had cap and kamikaze, had equal grimacart made the ghastly's record, but they did not look like they had spent the time pickled in the sea. Their hair was so stiff with water, water it stuck out like broom brushes. Their faces tanned dark brown. They were a little taller, maybe, well, it had been three months, and preteen could grow a great deal in three months. They were, without question, this skinny, unlikely threesome, the three last competitors to return alive to the archipelago, the last men and women back. 
The cup staggered forward to the judge's table, too tired to ask questions, almost too tired to think, the ticking thing dragging behind him in the sand. Tick tock, tick tock, tick tock, tick tock, tick tock. He stopped at the judge's table and wound the rope of the ticking thing around his wrist, placing it carefully before the dumbfounded committee. Softly, the two small hunting dragons folded their wings and landed on the table, their eyes fixed on the ticking thing in the centre. Tick tock, tick tock. And the alarm on the ticking thing finally went off in a peal of tiny clockwork bells, ringing in the sound of the hooligan national anthem. A typical grim beard, the ghastly touch. You have to admit it. The guy did have style. <laughs> Old Wrinkly reached out and turned it off. I wasn't late, said Hiccup. No, said Old Wrinkly. You were just in time. I have to see what happens tomorrow.